Welcome to the channel. This is Reliable Rudy. In this video, we're going to make our part two for Walt Disney Company. We're going to focus on their most recent earnings report. And we're going to take that information and following this video, we will be plugging in assumptions for our stock analyzer tool where we'll go to the macro trends and see where we're interested in buying the company. And we're going to wrap up the Disney series with a charting video. Uh, going over some details there. But before we get into this earnings report, I'm not a licensed financial advisor. Everything in this video contains only my opinion and is for entertainment purposes only. I'll also say I have no individual holding for Walt Disney Company unless it is in the VT Vanguard Total World Index Fund. Uh, I'm not even really sure if it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. But nonetheless, I have nothing personal to gain in sharing the information that I'm going to be going over. Uh, also, this is a large earnings report. They go into each individual segment. I'm not going to be breaking down the entire earnings report. I'm just going to be focused on our eight pillars and determining if there's anything that we can see, trends, or regardless of what it is. That's what I'm going to be focused on, so I'm not going to dive directly into every segment. So, if you are interested in doing that, I will show you how I got to this page. I simply typed Disney Investor Relations into Google. You'll see that. I clicked it and I went to Disney Press Releases. Clicked on that. The Walt Disney Company reports third quarter and nine month earnings for fiscal 2022. That is how I got there if you're interested in knowing that. So going into this earnings report, revenue increase. I This is part of the stock analyzer tool so we are focused on the revenue growth. So uh, for the quarter, year over year, grew 26%, and for the nine month, grew 28%. Now, in my last video, I state that they were uh, negatively affected, and in particular, their last three years. So, even though it's 26%, I'm not going to be using these for my projections because I don't know. It's possible that they had easy comps from the year before. I, I don't know that much about it. But in the end, I'm going to continue being conservative in my analysis but understand that from 2006 to 2018 the company uh, did everything that they needed to do and showed me that they're capable of, of producing so uh, another thing I want to point out free cash flow so quarter over quarter a decrease in 65 percent of cash flow and a nine month they are still negative on the year in free cash flow now there's four main things that I'm focused with with free cash flow that you can do with free cash flow. One, pay off debt, pay a dividend, buy back shares, or reinvest back into the business. So those are the four main things that I'm looking for in terms of free cash flow. So a little bit alarming that they had a decrease year over year of 65%, but we'll see if we can find anything that's related to that in the earnings. Uh, but yes, that is the free cash flow side. So now here is the segments. We are going to skip through all of their individual segments. Like I said, if you're interested in looking through this, by all means, I showed you how to get there. You can do that on your own. Uh, okay, other financial information right here. Increases of expenses. Keep that in mind. Other expenses. Okay, so I can see right here that they have an individual investment in DraftKings. And they did write off some of it for a non-cash loss. So they still are holding this investment. So keep in mind that you might want to dive into uh, DraftKings and see where they're sitting with that as well. I don't know where DraftKings is currently sitting. But also, um, what, it, what do you... What price do you like DraftKings at? That would be going into uh, where do I like the value of DraftKings? Do I think that they're going to still get a return? Because you can see they recorded a non-cast loss right here. So that could be uh, hurting or maybe they're benefiting from it now. I don't know. But something to monitor. You want to look at what their individual stakes are in. Um, let's just get to the income statements unless there's anything else that it more stuff on the free cash flow. We already talked about that. Okay, this is uh, also a key point of this earnings report capital expenditures. This is the company reinvesting back into their business. What what part what money are they putting back into their business? And is there anything here that we want to look at now? I can see year over year. This is the nine month. 
This is over 50% increase in capital expenditures. Now, you want to know where those increases in capital expenditures are coming from. Now, I can see right here, here is a large increase in capital expenditures, total Disney parks experiences and products. Are you okay? You have to ask yourself, are you okay with them upping their capital expenditures in this in, in this part of their business? So understanding where their where that increase in capital expenditures is going and are you okay with that? Uh, I, I don't know. That's that is up for you to decide. I'm not here to to get you the lean one way or the other, but understanding where those capital expenditures is going is important. But that is a large increase. So this is partially why it's cutting into their free cash flow as well they're upping their capital expenditures are you okay with that in the short term it could pay off long term i do not know but right here you can see capital expenditures increase from 2.5 billion to 3.8 billion Parsh are primarily due to higher spending at disney parks okay are you okay with that that's something that you have to ask yourself um yeah, just more information right here. Let's just get to the financial statements. I'm going to continue. Like I said, there's a lot of information on here. A lot of information to go over. So here we are. We're at the income statement here. So what am I going to be focused on right here? So a part of my stock analyzer tool is revenue. We already looked over revenue. Now profit margins. I want to be able to determine where their profit margins are for the quarter, how did that match up from the year before, year over year, quarter over quarter increases in profit margins is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go into here and calculate their profit margins. So I can see here's their revenue. Now with this revenue increase, you can see costs and expenses increased a decent amount there as well. So how much of this is good revenue? It looks like there probably is going to be an increase in profit margins off of first look, but here is their total net income for the quarter. So I'm going to look at the profit margins from the quarter in 2021, and then I'm going to look at the profit margins for the quarter in 2022. And just to reiterate, we will go to the income statement real quick, and you can see net income. Let's switch to this to a quarterly. So right here is Q2 or three, whatever it is, of 2021. I can see that they had net income of 918 million. So going back to this earnings report, here is that 918 million. So this is the number that I'm going to be using to see what their profit margins were. So I'm going to pull up a calculator. We're going to see what last year's was. Was we're going to take 918 divided by 17022. Now I can see they had profit margins of the previous previous year's quarter of about 5.3%. So uh, maybe this is a better quarter for them. It would make sense with uh, theme parks and in the summer, more people go to theme parks. So now I'm going to generate that 5.3% the year before. I'm going to take 1409 divided by 21504. 21504. I want to see increase. Okay, 6.5% profit margins. I do like that increase. And as I uh, had stated in the previous video, they had showed me from 2006 to 2018 that they can consistently grow their profit margins year in and year out. Now, the last three years were definitely skewing their five-year numbers. So I do like this increase in profit margins. That is a very good sign to me. Now, lastly, before we wrap this video up, I'm going to look at these shares so I can see a little bit of buyback shares. Let's actually go back to the quarterly. We're on the income statement already. So I can see uh, they've consistently been holding around this uh, $1.82 in shares outstanding. So uh, reiterating this 15% share dilution over the next five years, do I think that's going to continue going into the future? Well, off of this earnings report, they're not diluting any shares right now. So that is a very good sign. But I would like to see them buying back shares. But maybe that, that time just isn't yet. But into the future, are they going to be buying back shares or diluting shares? That is a question that you have to ask yourself. So understanding where these shares are outstanding is very important. Uh, let's just quickly skim through this and see. Uh, total assets. Let's see, check out a current ratio. We can see what their current ratio was before, too. I don't think I did that. So total assets, I want to see total liabilities less than that. Total liabilities, okay, so they got about a over a 
2.0 current ratio so like i said i don't think that disney is going out of business anytime soon i'm not worried about disney going out of business and if they are increasing profit margins that is also very good so i think that is going to wrap up my walt disney uh, earnings report you know if i didn't dive into it as much as you wanted i do apologize but a lot of information here uh, and I'm not an individual holder in Disney. I'd, I'm not too worried about that that aspect of it. But in terms of stuff that I'm looking for, I thought that this was probably a pretty solid earnings report for Disney. And if we look at the metrics, you know, the price has been going up pretty good off of this earnings report. There could be some other stuff in there that is beneficial to look through. But this is going to complete the video. I hope you guys enjoy the content. And we will see you on part three for Disney for our stock analyzer tool where we're going to plug in numbers for the company. And I will see you on the next video for that one.